uh, a week this month, as you know, we're looking at a different name for God, the different names of God. And last week we looked at Jehovah Jireh, that God sees and provides, and that God is an almighty provider. And you got to know God provides. He provides every need. And this week we looked at Jehovah Nisi, our victory banner. The Lord is my victory banner. And the uh, pastor gave us uh, some things to do to how to possess our victory that's already ours. And uh, one of the things that really stood out for me here was that pastor talked about how the victory should be our norm and not our exception. Mm -hmm. That should be our norm. It should be abnormal for a believer to not to know that they already have success and victory. Failure should be the abnormal and not the normal. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Reverend Harrison, you want to start us off? With well, you took pa part of what I wanted to say, <laughs> but the other part was how do we possess victory? Yeah. And he started out with rest, and that's yeah. resting the word, knowing that the word is true. Yes. And then not complaining. Yes. Yes. And definitely not complaining. I, I like the time you spend complaining, you could, could be doing something about it. Yes, sir. And we always win. I only think about losing, I'm winning. No yeah. matter what it looks like, I'm, I got victory. Yeah. And the last one, depend upon God, knowing that no, no matter what's going on, what it looks like, you know God's got it. That's right. That's exactly right. Pastor gave us uh, four things that we can look at to know how we possess our victory in life. How do we take a hold of that victory? And the first thing he said was what? Rest. 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 From Hebrews 4 3, rest. That we must, we as believers, have to understand that we already have the victory and have the confidence in the Word of God, knowing that God has already provided that. So if I always know I win, then there's no need to have any anxiety. There's no need to have worry or depression because I know I always win. So the first thing we have to do is rest. What was the second thing? Not complain. Not complain. That's my big one. Not, Not complain. complain. And when Pastor said, when we complain, it's plain that we are aligning with or completing the work of the devil. Mm. And then we're completing the work of the devil, complaining. And uh, I think about the story quite a bit uh, in Exodus and how uh, God miraculously brought the Israelites out. They saw miracle after miracle after miracle. They saw God kill their enemies by drowning them, and they walked on dry ground. And not 30 days out, they're complaining because they don't have water. So a God that can take your enemies, they were, they were slaves. Not only slaves, hardship, where they had to make bricks without straw. They're in this hardship situation. And 30 days out, they're already forgetting what God has already done. And starting to complain about not having water. Not believing that the God who brought them out cannot provide their needs. Seeing all God does but complaining. Complaining is only thing complaining does is take us down a bad road. It, it never accomplishes anything in life. And uh, oftentimes we, we find ourselves in a mode of complaining. One of the things that I've noticed that when you're around people who complain a lot, you, complain. <laughs> you start complaining a lot. <laughs> it's so easy to kind of get caught up in it. You know, if you end up in a work situation around family members that are always talking about how bad things are, before you know it, you find yourself doing that same thing. You're like, well, yeah, you know, it really is bad. Instead of, what can I be grateful for? And uh, this is something that when I was studying this, I've been really meditating on, is uh, when situations, comes up, com situations come up that I have the opportunity to complain, mm -hmm. I have two choices. Is it going to be attitude or gratitude? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If my attitude is going to be, oh, well, this is happening, it's going to be bad, it's done, and so I start complaining about it, or do I have a gratitude, an attitude of gratitude towards God that, you know what, yeah, this is going on, but look what God has already done. Look how God has already brought us through. This may not look so good right now, but it's not as bad as it could have been, mm -hmm. or it should have been, mm -hmm. to find the gratitude. So the choice becomes ours. Do we complain, or do we have a heart of gratitude? So I appreciate that. And so, Sunil, I know you had the links, did you have? Yeah. Yes, I did, and I thank God for being my victory banner. Yeah. I go to the Y to exercise on Mondays and Wednesdays. We're supposed to be there at 5.30 mm -hmm. to 7. I started going at 4 o'clock. All right, now. I told the coach, the lady that's coaching me, 
that I was not going to come in there at 5.30 and listen to those women complain. Okay. <laughs> I have told all of them each one-on-one that they say they believe, yes. well, then they should know that God knew everything you was going to go That's through right. from mm -hmm. the foundation of the earth. Okay. Pastor uh -huh. said that Sunday, it just, you know, yes. made me feel so much better. Yes. But yes. you'd be surprised the number of people since I've been through yes. cancer that I run into who say, yes. I wake up every morning and I thank God I'm alive, but then start complaining. Right. Mm. Right. Right. And I say, well, my God, yes. why aren't you rejoicing? You are alive. That's right. That's right. That's, That's right. right. From the foundation it's of the earth, earth, God knew. Yes. Last year at camp, I had a buddy that I used to complain about my arm. Uh -huh. And I used to say, you know, in the Bible, Jesus did things and he said straightway and immediately. Yes. I said, why is my arms done healed straightway and immediately? Okay. Then I realized, I think, Sister Harrison told me one day, she said, God's time is not our time. Mm. That's when I decided to just wait on the Lord. Okay. So. Praise God. Things are happening. Yes. Yeah. Things that I didn't know were going to happen. Things yeah. I was not prepared for. But I, when it starts happening, I just tell God, okay, yeah. you got that? That's it. <laughs> Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That is, this, you know, if you listen to Sister Mia's testimony, it would change the way you look at life. And here she's talking about how God already knew what was going to happen before the foundations of the world. Mm -hmm. Before we were created, God knew the situations we'd be in in life. He knew the choices we were going to make before we made them. So God already knows that. He knows us. He knows the very hairs of our head. Mm -hmm. Why in the world complain about situations of life? If you think about it, 99.9% .9 of situations are temporal. Mm -hmm. The temporary is not going to last. Just give it a minute and it'll change. Just give it a second here, things will change. Situations in life are like that. And I think the more we understand, if I can change what I say, start saying, Father, I thank you. Things may not be looking that good today, but thank you and praise you that a new day is coming. Thank you that your sun is up. Thank you, Father God, that it's not as cold today as it was yesterday. Finding something in life to give God praise for and thank him for will change the complaining mentality. And I will offer, sometimes we're around people who do that, that, that it becomes their, their mode of conversation. Com complaining is the way they, com they that's the way they, they communicate. And, you know, I, I've been around people like that and sometimes a little older than I am. And out of respect for them, I don't say anything. But that doesn't change that situation. Mm -hmm. So I've got to say, you know what? I understand what you're saying, baby. I understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. But God. But God. But God. God is so good. He, he, you're sitting here. You're talking. You have the opportunity to even, you, you have uh, lips and a mouth and words to be able to complain. To find something in the day to thank God for. Thank so I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Not complain, not complain. But for the line, what you have? Well, you know, on the same thing, you know, uh, what most people have difficulty with because, you know, we all got to be a human and uh, get into <coughs> the unpleasant, regardless of that, you got to endure that. Because you as an individual, how are you going to in order yeah. to get through it? Yeah. I mean, like, even today, with things that are going on, I'm saying to myself, I'm, I'm through with it, I'm through with it, but I want to just kind of <coughs> put my head so I can make it through the day so I can get on up out of here. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> life starts when I'm out of those situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the same thing goes in other situations in life where you come across people who have an that doesn't know how to get past it. So right. Care That's right. That's exactly right. Oftentimes, sometimes you really have to kind of remove yourself from those situations. When you're around people who want to complain, or if you feel like this is going, it's going to start. You know, you know what things are going to start. The best thing I could do is remove myself from that situation, change our position and our posture according to Isaiah 61. So complaining and around that whole that mindset, it gets into your spirit. And as 
Brother Ma said, you gotta remove your special <laughs> situation. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Brother Ma. Brother Mary, you have some? Okay. Brother Tim, you have some? <clears throat> um, first of all, along with what everybody else is saying, rest, <clears throat> that, that, that was one that really played on me. And um, just believing, by believing, especially in 2 Corinthians 2.14, mm -hmm. which Pastor mentions, <clears throat> it's like, <clears throat> thanks be unto God who gives us, who leads us in the palm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> thanks be unto God who leads us into triumphal procession, yeah. you know, in Christ. <clears throat> but um, what really <clears throat> stood out for me was, and really kind of really made a difference for me was removing the discord mm -hmm. in my life, mm -hmm. not only so I can win, yeah. but also so that I can hear from God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To me, that's that's been something I've been working on, you know, and so it really, that's just confirmation for yes. me. Yes. You know, just, you know, because <clears throat> I understand move, moving the discord to really was keep my, you know, <clears throat> so that I can be able to win or be in position to receive that all that, I, that God has for me. But yeah. also, lots of times I notice, um, even when I'm trying to either get into the Word or meditate on something, there's always something that comes up. And I know that's nothing but trying to keep me from hearing from God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because oftentimes, you know, I spend a lot of time by myself. Mm -hmm. And, and and lots of times, you know, I, <clears throat> instead of my mind wandering, I just get into the Word mm -hmm. and try to make That's sure right. that what I'm hearing is not something other than what I should be hearing. That's good. You know? That's good. That's good. That's so, good. But lots of times, it's a, just a lot of discord. I mean, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then it's, <clears throat> and then it's, sometimes it's a lot of chatter that I really don't have to accept. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and sometimes I find myself accepting it, and then I think about it, I'm like, whoa, 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 what am I doing? Yeah. I don't want to listen to that's that. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. That's exactly. I think that's a key, what Brother Tim was talking about, how with discord, discord cannot get into my life unless I allow it. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, I don't allow the chatter and the noise out here to come into my life. <coughs> if I allow it, it's going to come in. But I have, I'm the one that controls the gate. I keep, I'm the gatekeeper of what I allow in my life or not in my life. And as uh, Brother Tim was saying, if I am, God has already said I am to win. Mm -hmm. However, I have to determine that's my course of action. Mm -hmm. Discourse is going to get me off my course of action to win every time. And then Pastor talked about how we win. He gave us this acronym for the words for the Words for the word win. What was the W? We have the what? Our what? Our words must words be based must on be the based. word. Our words must be based on the word of God. In order to win, our words must be based on the word of God. Speaking what I think or what I feel is never going to take me down that road. It's going to take me in discourse a lot of times. But I have to speak what God said. Because the more I speak it, the more I think it, the more I believe it and get it in my heart. The I is what? Internal promptings. Internal promptings. Internal promptings. Romans 7, 6 from the Amplified. That internal promptings of the Holy Spirit. As I speak the word, I have to give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to speak in me and through me. So instead of speaking what I want to say, let the Holy Spirit bring that word back up to you. And say what God wants me to say. So I have to allow the internal prophecies to happen. And what was the end? You read Romans 7, 7, 6. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Romans 7, 6 from the Amplified, which was, our, um, which was our 2014, wasn't it, Pastor? Annual thing. Listen to Romans 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 6 from the Amplified. It says, But now, we are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with the law, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. 
So now we serve not under obedience to the 